Good morning, boys and girls. We are going to start um, a chapter 13 in our book, The Ghost of Fossil Glen. So here we go. Oh, and by the way, our book is an accelerated reader or an AR book, and it's a 4.9 reading level. Uh, the quiz number is 2673. Two. And I will remind you of that at the end of the story. So here we go. Now, if you remember right, Allie had just received, um, her, Allie's mom had put the desk in her room. Her mom and dad had talked to her about the conversation she had had with her friends, well, sort of friends, Allie and Pam, or uh, Pam and Karen. And Allie had overheard a conversation uh, that her mom and dad had had after having a horrible nightmare. And so um, we're picking up on chapter 13 uh, the next day at school. At school the next day, Mr. Henry handed back the students' journals. The room grew quiet as everyone studied Mr. Henry's comments. Eagerly, Allie read, Nice job, Allie. This story is very intriguing. I like the way you began with the mysterious message. I am L. Right away, I was curious to read more. This shows good imagination. I can't wait to see what you what will happen next. Allie smiled. Mr. Henry had liked her journal entry. He had praised her imagination. Of course, she thought, he doesn't know I am writing about things that really happened. He thinks I'm making up a story. But he found it intriguing. Allie thought that was a good way to describe, to describe, to describe to describe what was going on. Intriguing is, um, intriguing means interesting, mysterious. Uh, you're intrigued. You're wanting to know more about what is going on. She raised her head as Mr. Henry began to speak again. I noticed that some of you had a little trouble getting started, he said. I'm hoping that writing in your journals will come to be a pleasure, not a chore. I really meant it when I said you may write about anything you like. You're not writing to please me, but to stretch your imagination and to talk to yourself about the things that are going on in your lives. Some of you wrote about private thoughts and problems, which is fine. Others of you wrote very inter unusual pieces, and he looked at Allie. Allie, would you, how would you feel about reading your entry aloud? You don't have to say yes. I was just thinking that your story would be a good example of an entry that was a little different. Allie hesitated. Mr. Henry's request had caught her by surprise. She felt torn between pride and embarrassment. Come on, Allie, said Joey. Let's hear it. Yeah, Allie, read, other voices urged. You don't have to if you don't want to, Mr. Henry re repeated. It's okay, said Allie. She looked around at her classmates. Most of them were regarding her with great interest. Dub was grinning encouragingly. She glanced toward Karen and was immediately sorry. Karen's arms were folded across her chest, and she mouthed the words, Teacher's Pet. Allie looked away and reluctantly began to read. I am L. The words appeared mysteriously on the opening page of my journal. I sat down to write, and there they were. But that is not the beginning of the story. Allie continued reading until she came to the end. Who is L? I planned to find out. There was a brief silence before the class broke into spontaneous applause, all except for Pam, who was looking at Karen, and Karen, who was staring off into space with a bored expression on her face. Cool story, Al, said Brad. Another voice echoed, yeah. What's going to happen next? asked Trisha. Who cares? Allie heard Karen muttered. I don't know, said Allie, but boy, was that the truth. Mr. Henry was beaming at her. Thanks, Allie. I encourage, I enjoyed it even more the second time. After hearing that example of imaginative writing, I hope all of you will cut loose in your journals. Express yourself as freely as you like. But now, please put your journals away and let's head down to the library, Mr. Henry said. I talked to Mrs. Foster about your interest in Fossil Glen, and she had a terrific idea. So she suggested that we alternate field trips, trips, alternate field study trips to the Glen with research trips to the library. 
She's all set to help you find answers to the questions we raised yesterday. So get your pencils and notebooks and let's go. As they walked through the hall to the library, Mr. Henry fell into step beside Allie. I hope I didn't put you on the spot, Allie, he said. I really wanted the rest of the class to hear your work. Allie shook her head. It's okay, she said. I didn't mind. They walked a few steps in silence, and then Allie said, Mr. Henry, yes, do you think anything like that could really happen? Do you mean something like what happened in your story? asked Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. Henry looked into Allie's face for a moment before answering carefully. I think this, Allie. The world is a very complex, interesting place. Sometimes things happen that we don't understand. It doesn't mean there isn't an explanation. We simply haven't found it yet. Allie thought about that. It made sense. Why do you ask, said Mr. Henry. He wasn't making fun of her. He looked serious as if he really wanted to know. For a second, she thought about confiding in Mr. Henry, and then she remembered her parents' conversation that evening. If they talked to Mr. Henry, no, she better keep quiet for now. They kept approaching the they were approaching the library door anyway. Oh, I don't know, she answered. I was just wondering. Well, keep wondering, said Mr. Henry with a smile. That's how we learn. They walked into the library. As usual, it was a busy place, filled with children choosing books, watching film strips, listening to cassettes, working on projects, and clicking away at the computers. Mr. Mrs. Foster, the librarian, was everywhere at once, it seemed, answering questions, offering advice on how to find things. There was a table piled high with materials she had gathered for Allie's class. Mr. Henry tells me that you want to know everything, she said with a smile. So I pulled out information on fossils, lake and stream ecology, and the Seneca Indians, for starters. There's a pile of newspapers, too, containing articles about the recent and not-so-recent history of the Glen. Come to me if you have any questions, and I will be happy to help you look. After looking through the stacks of materials, the students scattered to tables to work. Mr. Henry had told each to think of one question about Fossil Glen and to try to find an answer. That afternoon, they would share what they had learned. Allie headed straight for the information Mrs. Foster had gathered on fossils. She was about to reach for a book called Secrets in Stone when she heard the voice inside her head. Look at the newspapers, it said. Allie froze. The newspapers, repeated the voice. Allie forced herself to act natural. Allie walked toward the table that held a stack of old editions of the local paper, the Seneca Times. She rifled through the pile. A photograph of a young girl with dark curly hair caught her eye. It was the girl from her nightmare, the girl whose face had appeared to her in the kitchen. Now, boys and girls, if you want to know more about the Seneca Indians, uh, we do have a world book link that is in our student drop-down box. So you might look up the Seneca Indians. And Seneca is spelled capital S. E-N-E-C-A. That's capital S-E-N-E-C-A. All right, chapter 14. The headline blared in large black letters, Rescue Workers Search Fossil Glen for Missing Girl. The paper was dated Thursday, May 19, 1994. Allie began to read, The search for Lucy Stiles continues. Lucy Stiles... Allie's mind flew to the small, lonely grave she and Dub had found in the cemetery. With a mixture of curiosity and dread, she continued reading. Village and state police are asking for the girl's help in locating an 11-year-old girl who was last seen by her mother at 5.30 Wednesday night. Rebecca A. Stiles, the girl's mother, reported to police that she became worried when it grew dark and her daughter had not returned from fossil hunting in Fossil Glen. Searching the Glen, Mrs. Stiles found a blue sweatshirt belonging to her daughter on the cliff above the Third Falls, along with a small pile of fossils. When it began to grow dark, Mrs. Stiles left the Glen to call for help. Police, fire, rescue workers, and volunteers searched through the night. Officials speculated that Lucy lost her fitting, footing on the steep, rocky precipice and fell. 
There was a drizzly rain last night, and that made the cliff real slick, said Police Chief Ron Webster. If she fell onto the rocks, we'd have found her. We figured she must have fallen into the creek and gotten washed downstream. That creek's running pretty good, so we've been searching along the banks, hoping she pulled herself out. So far, searchers have found no further sign of the girl. Tomorrow, officials are planning to drag the lake bottom near the mouth of the creek. Divers will also join the search. We're still hoping to find her alive, said Chief Webster, but he admitted to reporters that that possibility was becoming increasingly remote. The missing girl is described as being four foot six inches tall with blue eyes and black curly hair. She was last seen wearing jeans, sneakers, a red and black checkered flannel shirt, and a blue sweatshirt that was found at the scene. Anyone with information about Lucy Stiles or her whereabouts is asked to call the Seneca Village Police Department. Allie folded the newspaper and grabbed the next day's edition, marked Friday, May 20th, 1994. The headline announced, Lucy Stiles Still Missing. The article continued. Publicly, research, re rescue workers speak hopefully about finding 11-year-old Lucy Stiles alive. Privately, they express fears that the girl did not survive her apparent fall from the cliffs above Fossil Glen. Officials searched the creek bed downstream from where the girl's blue sweatshirt and some fossils were found on the cliff, without results. A thorough search of the waters near the mouth of Fossil Creek also failed to produce any sign of the girl missing since 5.30 Wednesday, Seneca Village Police Chief Ron Webster commented, Every year we warn kids to be careful in that glen, and every year we end up rescuing someone. I sure hate to see a thing like this happen. He added that there is no reason to believe that this was anything but an accident. Near where Lucy's sweatshirt was found, police found what appeared to be evidence of Lucy's slide off the cliff edge. We can't see clear footprints because of the rain that fell Wednesday night, but there was a long mud slide, long mud slick sliding, heading right off the cliff, edge of the cliff. I figured that's where she lost her footing, she said. The search will continue in Seneca Lake. Chief Webster stated grimly, except now I guess it's a search for the body. Allie, totally absorbed, searching one newspaper after another. The articles become smaller and smaller and less and less hopeful. After five days, the search was abandoned. There was no mention of Lucy Stiles for a week. Then Allie came to an article with the headline, Missing Girl Believed Death, Dead, Funeral Service to Be Held. She read that local, county, and state officials had completed their investigation into the death of Lucy Stiles, ultimately declaring it a tragic and fatal accident. Lucy's mother, Rebecca Stiles, reluctantly accepted the verdict that Lucy had not survived. Funeral services were to be held at the Presbyterian Church, followed by a burial in Fossil Glen Cemetery. With amazement, Allie read, Seneca Heights school officials were unanimous in their praise for Lucy and their sorrow over her death. Mr. Justin Henry, Lucy's sixth grade teacher, said, This has been a nightmare for our entire class. We love Lucy and hope so much that she'd be back. We will miss her terribly. Allie looked up, feeling dazed. She caught Dub's eye and motioned for him to come over. Look at this, she whispered. Dub's eyes grew wider as they traveled down the columns of newspaper from one paper after another. When he finished, she let out a low whistle. Wow. I don't remember hearing anything about this. It was four years ago, said Allie. We were little kids. We didn't know anything. I can't believe she had Mr. Henry for a teacher. Let's ask him about it, said Allie. She raised her hand and Mr. Henry came over, pointing to the newspaper article. She said, Lucy Stiles was in your class? Mr. Henry nodded, and a shadow darkened his usually sunny face. That was a terrible time, he said. Sometimes I still can't believe she's gone. Lucy was great, smart, imaginative. He smiled at Allie. You remind me of her, as a matter of fact. Allie blushed at the unexpected compliment, and he went on. I had just begun teaching, so Lucy was one of my very first students. When they said she was gone, I... He stopped for a moment and swallowed and shook his head. 
It was so sad and senseless, the way it happened. She knew that Glenn liked the back of her hand. She wasn't a careless, reckless kid. That's why I kept hoping it was all a mistake. But after a while, there was no point in pretending she was still alive. Allie and Dub were quiet as Mr. Henry stood by their table, a faraway look on his face. Then Allie asked, w Was she the only kid in the Stiles family? Yes, asked, answered Mr. Henry, and her father had died a few years before that, so Mrs. Stiles was left, on Stiles was left all alone. Where did she go? asked Allie. To California, I think, said Mr. Henry. She had family there. I imagine this town was full of painful memories for her. Yeah, agreed Allie and Dub solemnly. The house just sits there getting more rickety and creepy looking, Dub said. I wonder why she never sold it. Well, it's been in her husband's family for generations, Mr. Henry answered. Maybe she couldn't part with it for that reason. Allie was struck by a sudden perplexing thought. Hey, she exclaimed. The newspaper said Allie was going to be buried in Fossil Glen Cemetery. Dub and I saw her grave, but if they never found her body... Her voice trailed off in bewilderment. Who's buried there? It's what you call it a symbolic grave, I guess. Since there was no body, the family buried a box of mementos. The students in my class all wrote letters saying their goodbyes to Lucy. Other people added things too, said Mr. Henry. Allie and Dub thought about that for a moment. Mr. Henry glanced around the library and saw that Joey's hand was raised, indicating that he needed help with his research. Well, you well, you too, he said with a sigh. I guess you've learned a bitter truth. Fossil Clan is beautiful, interesting, and peaceful at times, but it could be pretty dangerous, too. Dub and Allie looked at each other as Mr. Henry walked away. Poor Mr. Henry, said Allie. It must have been awful for him. Dub nodded. Think about Mrs. Stiles, he added. What about Lucy? Allie said. No wonder her spirit can't rest. Do you mean what I think you mean? asked Dub. Yes, said Allie. L is Lucy. She's the ghost. I saw her falling in a dream last night, just the way it said in the newspaper, Dub. She looked exactly like that picture. Wow, said Dub. So what does she want from you? I don't know, said Allie, but I hope I'll find out soon. All right, boys and girls, I wanted to go back and point out some interesting things here real quick in our book. Um, sometimes authors will indicate or let you know that there is a difference in the conversation. And in this case, when Allie read in her journal what Mr. Henry wrote, the author made it look like this. And I don't know if you can, if I'm close enough to the camera for you to see, it's in this paragraph here. It's in italic writing. It's like a little slanted um, writing. Then when Allie read the newspaper articles on Lucy's a surge, it was indented, but in regular print. And it looked like this. A smaller columns like it would be found in a newspaper. So that tells you that it's a little bit different type of, not necessarily a conversation, but information in the book. All right, so we will stop. We will stop there for today. I hope you have a good weekend. I will see you on Monday for more remote learning. Have a great weekend, boys and girls. Bye.